The world is today connecting and transacting online. In Africa, this digital revolution is bringing with it plenty of opportunity for the world's youngest population. Yet, according to a World Bank publication of October 2019, just a third of the continent has access to broadband connectivity. This denies important quality services in healthcare, education, and other sectors for millions of people. And now one man, Dr. Harold Omondi, a lecturer at Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology in Nairobi, Kenya, is out to change this. He has introduced what he calls Internet from the Moon. My goal is to provide one Mbps to each household in Kenya so that at least each and every family within our community may have access to this valuable commodity called the internet. And to me, the immediate felt need of any community in Africa is the internet. Broadband uh, is a human right issue because we are now online, all of us. The kids are learning online. We need online to do shopping because when there was a lockdown, uh, the only solution that was there was to use e-commerce platforms. Um, everybody is into that space, even vegetables now, uh, because of the pandemic, people go online to do that. So broadband facilitates enterprise. Outside his office at the university, this little satellite dish is configured to communicate with transponders in the moon. Using this as his base station, Dr. Harold seeks to distribute affordable high-speed internet to 40 African countries, beginning with last mile connections in Kenya. From my dish, it connects to a transponder through specific line of sight and uh, the line of sight is capable of, of, of creating what we are referring to as uh, uh, internet packets which are then turned into internet signals. Then I terminate them into a, a server, into a, into a modem, then into a server. So in layman's language, there are equipment positioned in the moon several years ago by NASA, which have the capacity to receive and send back information. They're called transponders. Now this satellite has been positioned in such a way to communicate eye to eye with these transponders, establishing the link which Dr. Harold and his colleagues are using to bring internet. And because the moon keeps the same face pointing towards Earth in what scientists call synchronous rotation, this connection is never lost. Currently provided for free within the university and its environs as a pilot project, internet from the moon gets over 1,200 logins per day in this area alone. They have another station in South Sudan, which serves between 300 to 500 people per day. My connectivity is covering the entire Kenya and 40 other African countries. Meaning if you tell me to take internet to DRC, for example, it's not a big deal. If you tell me to take internet to Sierra Leone or even to Nigeria, I know that in Nigeria we'll be giving internet to 199 million Nigerians. Two things make Internet from the Moon particularly relevant. One is the ease to reach remote locations, and two is reduced costs to the consumer. Dr. Harold says his current satellite has 5G capacity, making it possible to provide bandwidth for heavy tasks. I can demystify the cost element of connectivity because I'm already having the infrastructure, that is one. Secondly, I'm capable of identifying alternatives which can be used to provide internet cheaply. I've come up with the local uh, products which can be used in this regard. From the moon to Nairobi, Kenya is now a reality. However, for Harold and his team to take their internet to every household in Kenya, they will need the financial muscle to acquire multiple satellite dishes for mass connection. Presently, each one of these costs them about $2,000. In a satellite, you have to build another infrastructure, the dish locally here. I don't know how we can make it so cheap that people can afford 
to put, to put the dish and be able to pay for the broadband. There has to be a lot of subsidies for them to be able to get there. But in some places where there is virtually no broadband, I am hoping that government can subsidize him to provide that, um, at least to plug in the gap that we have at the moment. Internet access point is a bedrock to support youth in entire Africa. If they can have access to internet, I'm convinced that in the, in the next five or 10 years, Africa may not be what we see. We may change the living standard, the lifestyle. The moon is within sight, and so are the hopes and dreams of the millions that Dr. Harold and his colleagues are striving to connect to the internet. Reporting for the Africa Development Journal, I am David Owino.